I'm not sure if you have you've ever heard of a social entrepreneur. This is a really interesting uh, business personality that I'm interviewing today. Her name is Kathy Wong, uh, the founder of a company called Maloka who uh, help out uh, children in need and it's just an absolutely thriving business. But what's most important about Kathy is her story of how she got there. Uh, again, another inspirational interview which I know that you're going to absolutely love. It's episode 31 of Life Lessons TV with Kathy Wong. So Life Lessons TV, look, it's going to be sort of, I think, a little bit edgy. I think it's going to be a little bit off the cuff. Um, I'm letting you know now that once I get excited about a topic, uh, I might swear a little bit. I might let uh, you know, a couple of curses go. So it's one of those things where I think I just want things to be kind of real. Hey guys, Adrian D'Amico here. Welcome to another episode of Life Lessons TV, episode number 31, and I am joined by the lovely Kathy Wong. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Adrian. Thanks for having me. Episode 31. Wow. I know. <laughs> um, I was telling you off here, I did two 29s for some reason, <laughs> and just had it stuck in my brain. So we've skipped one and we've, we've gone to 31. Uh, I'm really happy to be here with you. Uh, it's a beautiful day. I know. It's, it's actually the 31st episode and it's the first episode I've ever done uh, outdoors. So. Um, oh wow, yeah. well, first of all, great, I know. glad to be here. We picked an amazing yeah. day anyway. So uh, without further ado, can you please introduce yourself and, uh, and tell us who you are and what you do? Okay, right, okay. So I've been pretty much an entrepreneur all my life. Uh, since I was 23 and I retired when I was 42 and I ran design businesses because that's been my background, uh, mostly corporate design branding. And then I came out of retirement because I know this is going to sound really corny, mm. but I had a major epiphany one morning in February 2014, Adrian, and that was um, just three words, just three words which would change the course of my life and I suppose have me sitting here today. Yeah. And those three words were just make a difference. Really? Yeah. I know it sounds corny but that's exactly what happened. So now I do, I have this amazing job, I'm living on my purpose and I'm now what's called a social entrepreneur. Uh, I don't know if, well should I explain what that is? Well I'd like yeah. to talk about it. Sure. Okay. Uh, yeah because we, we've got these interesting terms that are coming out mm. and I, mean, I, I don't know how long social entrepreneur has been around, um, but I think the word entrepreneur itself gets toted a lot nowadays, right? You only have to change your Instagram handle and all of a sudden you're, you're in business. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, I would like to talk about it because I think that the social, social entrepreneurial side is really the catalyst to why I wanted to meet you and and talk to you. So, yeah, can you, like, yeah, sure. where does that come from? <laughs> it's really interesting, you know, because I'm constantly being asked, oh, do you do social media? Yes. And go, well, yeah, we do social media, but that's not what I'm on about, you yeah. know. Look, it's really, um, it's a new term, I suppose, for people who have decided to create a business that is actually doing something um, positive in the world and it could be dealing with a social issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the case of what we do, it's poverty, children in poverty. Could be an environmental issue or it could be a community issue. Yeah. So it's about aligning the two visions of having a business model that can then align with the vision of what it is we're trying to impact on. Mm. Uh, and then uh, we usually sell a product or a service that can then raise the awareness and raise the funds to be able to give back to our cause. Or it could be a supply chain thing, which right. is where you see a lot of the ethical businesses. You know, by, for instance, it could be coffee. Mm -hmm. um, having fair trade coffee as opposed to the usual coffee, because the usual coffee actually um, supports child labour and slavery. Oh, wow, okay. So that's a supply chain issue. Yeah. So that's how a fair trade company is giving back. Yeah, okay. All right, so the immediate thing that comes to my mind, and again, you've explained like your epiphany, so make a difference, all right? Yeah. But why? Like why? <laughs> That's so a like good you, question. You, you retired, you know, at, know. at four, did you say 40 or 42? 42. All right, yeah. so 
That in itself is an amazing uh, feat for anyone. You know, if most people are trying to retire at least by 65 so they can you know, you know, have a great life. And you've done it at 42, which is amazing. So I'm already um, jealous and you know, intrigued. Don't be. So I'll, be 40, I'll be 42 in two years time. Right. However, why would you then decide to go back into business and, uh, and create this thing or this business, but also have this element of, uh, of contribu uh, contribution and making a difference? So why? Why would, you, <laughs> why would you do it? And why then? Like, why now? It's a good question. I, I think I'm a late bloomer, you know. Um, when I was living my life of retirement, you know, it's like you said, everyone wants that, right? And don't get me wrong, it was fantastic. I traveled the world, I moved out to the country, I did all these things I wanted to do. But yet, there was just something missing mm. and I couldn't put my finger on it. And you know, all my life, all I've ever wanted was peace. I just wanted my own inner peace. Mm -hmm. And you know, while I ran my other businesses, I never had that. I was working like a dog, you know, and really? um, mm. and then when I retired, which was very interesting, mm. I thought, right, I'll finally get peace. Well, no, because I filled my life up with doing all these other things. It wasn't doing business, but it was filling my life, constantly filling my life, being busy. Right. Because, you know, I am an overachiever. I'm mm -hmm. a type A, and so I don't know how to relax, or I didn't know how to relax back then. And so, um, obviously too, you know, I was searching for something. I hadn't, I thought I had a purpose. I thought my whole purpose in creating my other businesses was to retire. Mm. That's what I thought. Okay. And then I discovered that wasn't the case. Right. Uh, you know, and kind of to understand my background, because I've come from a background of, you know, immigrants, and so mum and dad had a very hard life immigrating here. Money was always an issue. So I was raised in a family that was all about you work hard, you know, you work hard, you get a roof over your head and, and that's what your life is all about. Yeah. Being safe, being, um, yeah, being well looked after. And so that's what I did because mm. I didn't know any other way. Sure. And so um, I've had a good life. I've had a really good life. And so, you know, um, I've always contributed, even with my other businesses, which weren't social enterprises. I fostered kids. I donated to several charities with kids. And I always said that one day I'll do something big with kids. You mm. know? And I suppose that's what happened. My yeah. one day came. And I've always wanted kids, but unfortunately I wasn't able to have kids. Mm -hmm. And so I suppose it's, uh, uh, you know, yeah. there's different factors. It's one, one way or another, we're going to get some children involved and do <laughs> yeah. something with them. All right. Yeah. Um, before I ask you about your business, I wanted to, you, you touched on a very interesting point. So mm. in recent days, um, I uh, have made a decision on what I want to do in, as far as, um, you know, my, my business and life and family and experiences. I've got this thing, this thing in the last couple of years is experiences, not things, yeah. right? So. Uh, I haven't retired by 42 or even 40, right? I thought I was going to retire by 25, but you know, I extended. So, yeah. however, I wanted all the big things, you know, the house, the cars, the multiple businesses, all that kind of stuff. Then got to a point where I thought, you know what? I'm working frantically to make this happen, which in essence wasn't what I really wanted. It's what I thought that the world said that you should have if you want to be successful that's what it means to be anyway that aside mm. I'm now experiences not things so I'm doing things that kind of do require finances and money but yeah. there I'm taking memories away I'm not taking um, profits so to speak or you know building empires but I've had an argument in the last couple of days because I'm like if you are brought up to your parents are, because I come from an ethnic, ethnic parents, so my mum's Australian, dad's Italian, so it's worked, you freckle off, okay? Yeah. Um, make life for yourself. If you want to get anything done, you do it yourself. So I come from um, self-employed people and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's in me, it's embedded in me, it's like I am the father, I am the provider, um, I have to work hard and do this for my kids to have a better life, the way that my family did for me. Mm, yes. But then I woke up to myself and thought, Am I actually demonstrating to my children 
that all you have to do in your life is to sacrifice yourself, work your freckle off for their children. So whoever gets to live the better life. Yeah, exactly. It's so funny that you mention all that because we're definitely, we're so aligned on that part of our, our lives for sure. Mm. Yeah, no, and that, that's what I've realized too, you know, that uh, if we don't take care of ourselves first, we can't help anybody, right? Because yeah. our own happiness is so important. You know, my parents, God love them. They're still like this to this day, you know, yeah. they're in their 80s and everything is still for us kids. Mm. And they're these martyrs, you know, and it's like, I just want you to enjoy your sure. life. But that's the only way that I know. Any different. All right. yeah. And so when did you, is that part of the epiphany in terms of, mm. I've been working so hard, I've been doing all these great things. I've got great things as a result. But where's the like? Why why am I not fulfilled? Why do I don't have the peace that I always wanted? Like, is that the yeah. I don't know. I, I wanted to say emptiness, but you know, I mean, a void that is needs to be filled. Is that where that come from? Do you think? Yeah, definitely. It def is a huge contribution to that. But also for me, there's another part of it, which was my self worth. Mm. You know, and uh, that comes from being an Asian girl, yeah. oldest daughter. Uh, it was expected of me that I would just go marry the nice Chinese boy, have really? the kids, right? Well, I didn't do any of those things. Mm -hmm. And so um, I didn't have a voice. I didn't have a voice growing up because I was, it was expected of me just to do everything my dad told me to do without really? questioning. Yeah. And that's why now we actually have quite a lot, even though we both love one another dearly, mm. we actually have quite a lot of friction from time to time because yeah, really? I'm actually now standing up and voicing my opinion. Yeah. And my dad just like can't handle that, you know, yes. what's going on. Yeah. yeah. Do you think that that is a generational thing or do you think it's um like i know with with the european culture it is kind of like male dominant and all that kind of stuff do you think it's it's uh as a woman you're standing up for yourself or do you think it's we're coming into an age where people are comfortable expressing their like their opinions and their voice what do you think about that i think it's a combination definitely generational mm. although it's interesting because we do a lot of work with our teenagers now and I'm talking teenagers two generations on who yeah. are Chinese, yeah. who are still having exactly the same issues as I did back then. Really? And that's why they're all reaching out to me to say, well, how did you deal with your family? Mm. You know, our families are still wanting us to go to all the traditional subjects. We don't want to do that, all the traditional career paths. Yeah. And so they're now the ones who are stepping up and becoming these amazing youth leaders because it's their way of rebelling against their parents. So we've got the generational thing, we've got the immigrant thing, the girl thing for sure. Women are now, you know, so much more vocal, have so much more power. Mm. So, so I absolutely love the business for its message and its purpose. Um, so I mean I, I'm all for business and I love that you know that side of things. But you've definitely inspired me to think how can I create something that's similar in terms of that um, contribution aspect as well. But um, can you tell me how that come about? Why, yeah. like, why Morocco? Like, they're, they're the questions I really, really want to yeah, sure. get answered. Well, look, after I had my epiphany, right, um, and, you know, for about two weeks, I actually thought this is just, I don't know, some crazy dream. And uh, the dream just kept getting louder and louder, and I realised that someone was trying to tell me something, and I had to act upon it. So when I made that, I suppose when I realised that, a whole series of events happened really quickly. Mm. And within uh, two weeks, you know, of having that epiphany, I learnt about children in the world that didn't have shoes. And usually I'm really good, Adrian, remembering where my sources of information come, come from. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you where this article came across my desk, but I learned about, you know, over 300 million children in the world without shoes. Wow. And yeah, and it was like, I love shoes, being a typical woman. So <laughs> yeah. it's like, oh my God, how can someone grow up and never own a pair of shoes in their life? Mm. And how can they not even go to school because they don't own a pair of shoes? Because they're worried about disease being spread in some of these countries mm -hmm. because the kids are walking over open sewage, um, you know, industrial building wow. waste. Mm. And then those same diseases could be life-threatening. That's just blew my mind and uh, because I was always always interested in children as I said that was it 
okay, I need to do something there. That was the first decision I made. Then the second thing that happened, again, I don't remember, literally it was days later that I read about social enterprise. And I read that, you know, this was a new way of doing business. This was taking the world by storm. And I thought, well, I do know something about business, so maybe I could use my business skills to help these children. Mm. And that's how Moloko was born. That's fantastic. Because, um, you know, Moloko actually means dream crazy. That's my next question. Yeah, <laughs> it's a made up yeah. word that I made up of two different languages, Hawaiian and Latin. Right. And because my dream just seemed so incredibly overwhelming. And, yeah. you know, all this stuff came up like, well, who am I to think I can do this? Who are you? Mm. What do you know about this? And so for me at that time, my dream was, you know, I wanted to see a world where all children could dream and have that opportunity to have a different life to the life that these kids had. Yeah. So that's how it came about, really. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't it just baffle you how 300 million children can have not have shoes and then their education is being stifled as a result mm. like we just don't realize how yeah how lucky we freaking are freaking good like yeah yeah uh what's been your experience in because i know you're going to be traveling soon so what, have you got experiences have you seen mm. what this is like Sure, I've seen lots of um, amazing things like uh, we do work in India yeah. and you know most people think uh, that I would have been to India first, saw the plight of the children and then started the business but yeah. no, yeah. I never went to India till a year after I started the lockdown really? yeah. and um, so I didn't take the usual typical path that most people you know think you do. Sure. Uh, so uh, I met kids in uh, the various projects that our charity partner works with and the one child that really impacted my life was a young girl that I met in the hospital that our charity partner um, funds and this little girl was she seemed very tiny I could see her out of the corner of my eye and we were walking around visiting the children in the hospital and we had a, a team of people with us and they're all holding back everyone was they could see her and we we're all feeling a little bit well I've got to say intimidated and I just felt compelled to go over to her bed and as I got closer I saw that she was pretty much just like a torso because her arms and her legs were all deformed and twisted and I later learnt that she had been found on the railway track in a garbage bag left to rot because she had cerebral palsy and so her parents, you know, had no way of looking after her. Can't blame the parents, you know, it's just, this was just a very unfortunate situation. And um, maggots had started to attack her, her body. But thankfully, um, someone from our charity actually found her on the railway tracks, rescued her. And this little girl, even though she couldn't move any part of her body, all she could move as I got close to her was her head. Her head started moving and then her eyes just lit up like bright stars really? in the sky and tears just started streaming down because it was very emotional mm. and then by this time the others had actually joined me but you know I've got to say she's been rescued she's a really happy little girl she's going to be looked after now for the rest of her life by two kind sponsors but that's just one example of so many I could tell you about that's that amazing. Um, yeah it's very hard to explain until you're there and you're feeling and seeing this, nobody can really tell you what it's like. Mm. Yeah. So I imagine that your energy mm. towards the business would have been just <laughs> pouring out of you after yeah. seeing it, yeah? Yeah, because I now, when I went there a year later, it was like, okay, I really know I'm on the right path. Mm. Because, you know, there was still self-doubt coming up and all of those natural emotions. And it was like, yep, yeah, this is why I'm doing this. Mm. Yeah. Well, what's um, amazing about what you've done there mm. is you've had an idea or an epiphany, as you call it, right? Yeah. So however it came to you, like <laughs> yes. I just go like, whatever, I'll right. take it. Yeah. Um, and you acted on it. Mm. And so you even acted on it without even really seeing what was on the other side or, you know, that, those sorts of things. And, and I think when it comes to 
particular countries like you mentioned, there, there's always that kind of element of is it going to the right people? Um, is it is it really helping them? You know, all that kind of stuff. So, but you did it anyway, which I think is just, I mean, that obviously speaks volumes about just who you are as, as a person. But uh, knowing entrepreneurs as I do, um, even as accomplished as you are, it just would have still had the same elements of, I've never done this before. Like you mentioned before, it's just like, is it gonna work? Am I doing the right thing? Is it worth it? Look what I've done so far. Do I wanna mess that up? Like, <laughs> can I do this? Who's gonna believe me? It's, uh, it's not what I'm used to doing, you know, that sort of thing. Very uncomfortable, you know, because what I realized that uh, in my previous businesses, I kind of hid behind them because I was selling the company, yeah. right? We had a team of people, we're selling a product, and there was not the emotion. Now I wear my heart on my sleeve. If I fail, it's me. Everything is me. You know, even though I've got people supporting me, it's still me. Mm -hmm. And that's been a huge lesson for me um, to put myself out there and to be very vocal and to, yeah, this is me, guys. I, you know, whatever's going to happen, I don't know. I yeah. don't know, but I just have to try this. Mm. Yeah. So it's a very scary feeling at times. So can you talk me through that? Like, mm. what? What goes through your mind as a person who's accomplished so much at such a young age already? So you're already, like you said, the type A, you're already the overachiever. I mean, that in itself is probably a blessing and a curse. It, it definitely. All right, so, and a Gemini. Yeah, there you go. All yeah. right. So um, mm. you, you, what's, is, who's got the scales? Is it, what's Gemini? Gemini's the two heads, is that yeah, right? Two, yeah, two yeah. twins, That's exactly. right, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, I've got to yeah. scratch up on my uh, yeah. star signs. <laughs> I'm a Taurus, by the way, so what? what? Ah, so you're very um, earthy. Yep. You're very earthy and so you're emotional. And, no, it's a good sign. Yeah. My, <laughs> brother's, my brother's a Gemini. <laughs> okay. So uh, anyway, mm. go off track. Um, yeah. I was gonna, what was I gonna <laughs> say then? All right, so um, you've got all this you know, self-doubt, you've got things going against you because you're an overachiever, you've done so much, mm. but then you're gonna do this thing, you're a fish out of water. As uh, an entrepreneur, as a human being, as a woman, um, like what did you go through in, in that time still go through it you yeah. know um, as I said uh, my journey with Moloko I thought was like a seven month journey from the moment I had that epiphany it was seven months till we launched which I thought was actually a long time and people have actually said no that is really short mm. particularly because you're manufacturing you're working there you know nothing totally. about yeah. but for me it just seemed like a long time as we had problems with the manufacturers running late and I had a friend of mine, a really good friend, who actually pointed out to me, this has been a 20-year journey for you. And I thought I like about that. it and I thought, yeah, she's right. 20 years of personal development mm. to be able to, um, I suppose, have the courage to just say, yeah, I can do this. <clears throat> Even though I still have my doubts, you know, and yeah. face that on a daily basis. Mm. But... I'm better at dealing with it, you know, uh, than I was, say, back three and a half years ago. Yeah. Um, and I have always had that type of personality where I just dive in and I, I've always, that's how I've learned. I've always just jumped in the deep end and I've swam. And it's good and it's bad. <laughs> mm. So yeah. uh, you must have been in a situation where when you talk about being vulnerable and, mm. being, and putting yourself out there, was there a bit of, you know, I guess your, your ego on the line, or is it, I mean, it's part of self-doubt, part of yeah. this is what I've done so far, and now I'm going to put myself out there, so it's all, all living and dying on this yeah. this whole thing. How did you deal with that? How did you, how did you handle yeah, that? Yeah, look, I, um, I found myself really going down a spiritual path, and I found myself, you know, yeah, pursuing lots of different um, modalities and teachings, uh, you know, I'm a regular meditator now, a yogi. Uh, so just, yeah, just looking for going inside myself, I suppose, because I've always been a very external person mm. and really looking at who am I, um, trying to understand myself better. Yeah. And yeah, and that's really been a huge, huge um, 
that's really been the reason I have been able to get to where I, I am now. Mm. If I had operated in the old way, I wouldn't be sitting here today, I don't think. People do have the blinkers on, so to speak. So, yeah. all right, is, do you feel that that is missing in a lot of people's lives? So what you've, whether you win, lose or draw, and I'm sure you're gonna win because Thank that's you. just your, <laughs> your thing, right? Um, however, is you feel like, you've mentioned this before, I'm living my truth now, I'm living my I'm purpose, I'm following, all that kind of stuff. And that gets really pushed uh, into the, you know, in, into the world now. If you're not following your passion, you've got to, you know, you've got to do something you love, uh, which, you know, I'm pro all of that. Right. But it's not everyone's cup of tea, and I just wanted to maybe uh, get your opinion on, you know, is that something that people, is that an evolution? It took, this is a 20-year journey for you, or this is, a, you know, it, is it something that people need? Do you think society desperately needs to, to attach on onto more meaning, more purpose, get to know themselves more, um, experience different, like you said, modalities, you know, whether it's meditation or yoga or whatever it might be, but getting to understand why, like who they are and why they are the way they are, those sorts of things. Um, what's your take on that? I love you asking me this question, I really do. I don't think anyone's asked me this question before, so it's great. And I can talk to you, the cows come home about this. Yeah, we've got all that. Uh, <laughs> no, look, I think it's critical. I think, you know, we're living in a world, when I look at how I was as a leader back in those 80s, which was excessive 80s, business was all about profit, uh, it was about competition, it was about domination, ego-based leadership, you know. Um, I believe that, you know, and we're moving out of that into this heart-centered space. Why do we have so many problems in the world? Seriously, you know? Sure. It's because it's, we have become a society that's disconnected, disconnected from our hearts, then disconnected from each other. And so I see it all the time. I see it in the youth. I see it in, you know, all age groups. Yeah. We're living in a world where there's so many opportunities to connect through the digital age, yet we have, I see global suffering of mm. huge proportions with, you know, the homelessness, with, um, you know, suicide, all the mental health issues. Yeah. I don't remember seeing those things when we were young and I've spoken to my parents about it and yeah, maybe some things were covered up, mm. but we don't have, if you look at the stats, we didn't have these sorts of epidemic yeah. proportions with these problems. And so I think it's critical because people have been working really hard, pursuing what they think is what everyone else thinks they should have. Mm. And now we have so much unhappiness in the world. And yeah. it comes, I believe, it comes from a, a fundamental issue of people not being happy with themselves. Sure. So they seek, you know, alternate ways, which could be their career path, could be, uh, you know, uh, material, uh, assets, you know. Mm. Uh, so I think it's really critical, and I, again, I'm seeing it in the youth all the time. Yeah, they're coming up to me and they're saying, oh, you know, I want to find my passion. So I really do believe that that is the that is the way that we're heading, because we're just coming back to ourselves. We're coming back to the basics. You know, we've gone just done this huge 360 to just return to, hey, what is life really about? What yeah. really matters? Hmm. Yeah. So it's, it's almost like the things that have been designed to bring us together, in mm -hmm. some way that's happened and in another way it's almost made us more distant. You know? So I, I agree, I think there's, we live in a time where there seems to be more wealth, more abundance, more opportunity, more ways to search, travel, you know, yeah. connect, you know, you can speak to someone you know, across the globe in a, in a well, heartbeat, right? I think we right? met, didn't yeah. we, online? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. Like, this is a very mm. common experience for me to yeah. know someone or be so familiar with someone uh, through the digital, you know, how do you, what do you call it? Digital like the, the, world. The world yeah. or the, yeah. you know, but only meet really for the first time, you know, and have a 3D conversation, which yeah. I think is the best. It is good. I've right? had this happen all the time. I mean, I traveled last year for three months out of the three months I only paid for three weeks of accommodation because yeah. people just opened their doors to me that I'd met online or they'd introduced me to one of their friends or their connections and a similar thing's happening again when I travel for five months. Wow. So, you know, and again, it's because 
people are crying out for that connection. When I first started doing what I'm doing, I just set up a Facebook page. I had not been on social media at all. Mm. And I thought, you know, it's really fascinating. I need to um, confirm my observations that I think people are really disconnected. And seeing as everyone's using social media or Facebook at that time, I'll, I'll hop on. Mm. And literally within two weeks, people from all over the world were just reaching out to me. Wow, and really? I had a lot of coffee in those days. <laughs> yeah, all bet, the people yeah. I could locally. <laughs> yeah. Know. Yeah. Interesting. Mm. All right. Um, I could like you talk for days about this. Uh, I feel like you've got a very strong message to send to the world with what you're doing. Um, not just from a social entrepreneur point of view, but also from someone who has gone through, uh, you know, higher education, chasing accolades, the hustle and bustle of, you know, fast life and you know, all that kind of stuff, but then really come full circle to a point where you're now uh, chasing dreams, yeah? Yeah. Crazy dreams. <laughs> Crazy dreams. Yeah. yeah. So uh, this show is called Life Lessons, and for very good reason because um, although it's you know, a, a business base, but there's humans behind this screen here mm -hmm. who are like, I've always wanted to do something like that, but never had the opportunity to, or never thought that I could do it, and never had the self belief. Um, I too have got European families, but here's the thing: I'm not a youth anymore, I'm freaking 40, you know what You're I mean? You're still a young one yeah, compared to you know, me. And I've still got yeah. you know, my father in my ear saying certain things as, as what they do. So you've got to break the mould and you've got to have the courage and the intestinal fortitude to do what, you, what your, your heart desires. Otherwise, to me, my greatest fear is going to my deathbed with regret because mm. if I'm on the rocking chair thinking coulda, shoulda, woulda, didn't, I think I'm going to hurt a lot more then than messing up now and then you know everything turns to shit and all of a sudden I've got to you know go work at Woolies or something crap. not there's anything wrong with that but you know yeah. I've got to go and pick myself up but mm. if you were to have a lesson that you could share with the community um, one life lesson that you could leave as a parting gift mm. wow what would it be? okay wow there's obviously a lot of lessons but I would just say whatever it is that you know you want to do just go and do it really it's as simple as that and you know just start make that first step because people get so overwhelmed they use the excuses of well I need to know have all my ducks in line before I'm going to try and then they get thwarted you know in their efforts just make one move you know whether it's calling somebody to discuss your idea whatever it is you know you can if you just make that one move and get into action that then creates momentum and then that just keeps breeding and, and moving you forward and i always love you know that um that message from ray Kroc, you know of mcdonald's where he talks about starting a business it takes fourteen thousand steps to start a business right so that helps me put it into perspective and it doesn't just apply to a business right there are a lot of steps, right? A lot of steps to whatever it is you want to achieve. Don't be put off by that. Just start that one step and then you'll start to move into action. The worst thing you can do is just not do anything, which I think is where the majority of people lie. Mm. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, I want to thank you so much for your time today. <laughs> um, it's you, been honey. just an absolute pleasure. I wish you just every success in the world with your endeavors and um, I can't wait to watch your travel <laughs> adventures uh, come to come to life so thank you once again no today. thank you and look maybe we'll hook up when we're both over in Europe <laughs> definitely I would love that thank you so much okay thanks Adrian all right there you go guys this has been another episode of life lessons TV I'll see you on the next episode so life lessons TV Look, it's going to be sort of, I think, a little bit edgy. I think it's going to be a little bit off the cuff. Um, I'm letting you know now that once I get excited about a topic, uh, I might swear a little bit. I might let uh, you know, a couple of curses go. So it's one of those things where I think I just want things to be kind of real.